All right, I think we're up and running here, so let's just click a few more things and we'll get started. Alright, hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining me on this Tuesday evening. We're going to start this right at the top of the hour here at 8 p.m. as we head into what potentially could be a busy couple of hours across eastern Ohio and western PA. We have an elevated risk for severe weather in parts of the region this evening, especially in areas south of Youngstown and especially down closer to Interstate 70. This is all going to, according to how we've been kind of communicating this for the last several hours, overall the risk locally in our television market, in the Youngstown television market, the risk is lower than it looked like it would be 24 hours ago, but still it's high enough that we have to pay attention to it, again, especially down in our southern viewing area. So let's get things started here. Uh, no severe weather is imminent in our television market. All of the nasty storms are out closer to Columbus right now, but everything's moving quickly. So we wanted to get this live stream up and running well in advance of potential storms. Uh, this evening we have several severe thunderstorm warnings out for the greater Columbus area, especially south and east of Columbus. And you'll notice there are a few tags on these indicating tornado possible. And this includes one polygon that is a tornado warning. This is southeast of Columbus where some rotation has been spotted. This is where all the warned storms are right now. There's a few more warnings down towards the Ohio River southeast of Cincinnati, but we don't have to worry about that activity. The activity that could impact our television market is all this stuff that's now between Columbus and Zanesville along Interstate 70. Uh, closer to home, let's uh, just go back home for just a minute. Yes, it's raining. It's not what we want to see. Um, but we have had some showers over the last couple of hours. Uh, we've had too much rain in the last couple of days, that is for sure. But all of the activity is sub-severe. In fact, there's very little, if any, thunder and lightning here locally as of the top of the hour here at 8 p.m. Just a little while ago, the uh, National Weather Service uh, in the Storm Prediction Center coordinated a new tornado watch issuance for all the counties in red. Tornado watch in effect this evening in our television market. This includes Columbiana County and then all the counties to the south. Carroll County, Jefferson County, Hancock County, over towards Beaver County, PA, Allegheny County where Pittsburgh is, all the I-70 counties from the Indiana state line to the Pennsylvania state line under that tornado watch this evening. You're not in the tornado watch in Mahoning County, Trumbull County, Mercer County, and points to the north of there where the severe weather risk is overall a fair amount lower. And you know, we have one of these situations uh, this evening that's pretty borderline. We have a pretty strong warm front across the state. You can pick it out on the dew point map this evening. You'll notice the dew points are higher in the green colors off to our south. Dew points are a measure of the moisture in the atmosphere. We like to use it more than relative humidity because relative humidity numbers can be kind of deceptive. You can have a cold winter day in which the relative humidity is 100%, but you wouldn't say it's a humid day in the middle of winter. The dew point's a better descriptor of how much moisture is actually in the air. And when we get into the season, especially later in the spring and into the summer, we talk about dew points a lot. Anytime we have dew points above 60, most of us think it's kind of muggy. Once dew points get above 65, we think it's kind of uncomfortable. And once dew points are in the 70, 70s, I should say, it really starts to feel like Florida. Now we don't have those midsummer dew points, but these dew points are sufficiently high to fuel um, thunderstorms especially again right now down towards the Interstate 70 corridor where those dew points are closer to 60. In our area in Northeast Ohio, Western PA, the dew points are mostly in the 50s, although it gets a little bit higher. Uh, once you get down towards East Liverpool, uh, the dew points there are closer to 60 here in the eight o'clock hour. So again, we're just getting this live stream started. Thanks for joining me here on uh, YouTube and on Facebook, everyone. Uh, I'm Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. If you're watching on YouTube in particular, I tend to get some people watching on YouTube who aren't anywhere near Youngstown. They just stumbled upon the video on YouTube. Uh, welcome, television meteorologist here in Youngstown, Ohio, which borders Ohio and Pennsylvania, and we're covering potential uh, severe weather this evening. Uh, we have no warnings out in our viewing area right now, aside from a flood warning that's in effect for the Ohio River down towards East Liverpool and Wellsville. We also have a flood warning out for uh, Eagle Creek up in Trumbull County. This is a very this is an area that very commonly floods when we get too much rain uh, around the Southington and Braceville areas. So that flood warning is out all the way through 
Thursday. What's actually falling from the sky locally is not a whole lot. Maybe a shower here and there. I'll strip off the warning information here, make this a little easier to see. Not a lot going on. We have thunderstorms and some bouts of heavy rain just east of Cleveland, but all of this is missing us to the northeast. That's not a problem for us. The activity that's down closer to the Ohio-Kentucky line is not a problem for us. All of this activity. This is going to be a miss. What we're going to be tracking here in the 8 and 9 o'clock hours is the activity that's now east of Columbus, kind of between Columbus and Cambridge on inter Interstate 70, uh, approaching the Zanesville area right now. A lot of lightning and thunder with this. All the plus signs you see on the radar, I get asked about this a lot during severe weather coverage. Um, when we display lightning on our radar maps, we show the lightning bolts, but we also show the plus signs. What's the difference? It's all lightning, it's all dangerous. But the lightning that has the plus signs is positive voltage lightning, which tends to hit more things on the ground. Um, it, has, it has a higher voltage. And so positive voltage lightning is more dangerous. That's why we like to display it on the radar. But it's all lightning, it's all dangerous. It's nothing you wanna mess with. And yeah, these are prolific lightning producers east of uh, Columbus right now. I mentioned uh, there is one tornado warning uh, currently in effect uh, for just southeast of Columbus, embedded in a whole slew of severe thunderstorm warnings here. Uh, this is down towards Lancaster and Hawking. Um, it's in effect until 8.30, so for another 25 minutes. This is along the Route, route uh, 22 corridor. If you're familiar with Central Ohio, um, Route 22, one of the major thoroughfares coming out of Central Ohio, and it'll take you all the way um, into Western PA and into Central PA as well. But that's the area that has the tornado warning. But the Weather Service offices in uh, Pittsburgh and in Wilmington, which covers most of Southwest and Central Ohio, have uh, put those tags on a couple of those severe thunderstorm warnings, the tornado possible tags, uh, which means it's not a tornado warning, but it's a severe thunderstorm warning in which there may be signs of some rotation trying to form, so they put that tag on that says tornado possible. So that's what you, uh, what you see right there. Let's zoom out and take a look at the region as a whole. And, uh, you know, here's our main show tonight out across central Ohio, but you can see that we have rain and thunderstorms that uh, cover a large, large area. In fact, we'll zoom all the way out here and just real quickly before we come back home, show you the extent of our severe weather tonight. Tornado watches from the Gulf Coast all the way up into Ohio and southwestern Pennsylvania. A lot of stormy weather, and this is a kind of a mid-spring-like setup um, with severe weather in the warm sector and heavy, heavy snow in the cold sector, Green Bay up towards the UP of Michigan, and there's gonna be heavy snow before the week is through up here in New England. This is very common in April. You get snow on the cold side, you get severe weather on the warm side, you get a little bit of everything in these, you know, kind of early to mid spring kinds of setups. All right, back here in our television viewing area, uh, Tornado Watch includes Columbiana County and points south, that's the red. There's a, a flash flood warning in effect for Southern Columbiana County, including around the Ohio River as a result of the river running pretty high. In fact, let me uh, pull up a graphic for you here to show you some river levels. Bear with me for just a moment. Our rivers are definitely, uh, you know, they're running a little bit high. Here's uh, the Ohio River at uh, the gauge at East Liverpool, which is gonna come up here in just a moment. There we go. Uh, the Ohio River at East Liverpool expected to crest Thursday afternoon at 15.4 uh, feet. That's just below moderate flood, sta flood stage, which begins at 16 feet at East Liverpool. At Wellsville, the Ohio River expected to crest Tuesday afternoon at 13.6 feet, which is right in the middle of minor flood stage. Moderate flood stage at Wellsville begins at 14 feet. Mahoning River at Levittsburg, also running very high, um, expected to crest Overnight tonight or into tomorrow morning, uh, probably pretty close to moderate flood stage there. Moderate flood stage begins at Levittsburg at 14 feet. And of course, uh, Eagle Creek, Phalanx Station. This is a very flood prone area near Braceville. And as you can see here, the uh, current flood stage a little over 10 feet. We're expecting a crest maybe tomorrow morning right around 12 feet, which is right in the middle of minor flood stage. So everything's running pretty high and you know, we've seen Quite a bit of rain over the last 24 to 48 hours. Let's show you some uh, official observations at some regional airports. These are the uh, rainfall totals going back 48 hours. 1.32 at the Youngstown Warren Airport in Vienna. But as you can see, there's a swath of two plus inches 
uh, approaching three inches in many places from Pittsburgh across I-70 towards Columbus. And some of our more local rain gauges are also pretty impressive, and these only go back 24 hours. There's a rain gauge down towards Glenmore, Calcutta, and southeastern Columbiana County that reads 1.96 over the last 24 hours, 1.16 in Columbiana, 1.52 Elwood City, and in downtown Youngstown about an inch over the last 24 hours. There's been pretty, there's a lot of these gauges are reading right around one inch over the last 24 hours. So, just checking my uh, comments. Thanks to everyone who's tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, always nice to see everyone checking in from different locations. We've got someone watching from Hanoverton, someone from Hartford, Ohio, Brookfield, Ohio as well. Thanks to everyone for tuning in this evening. And over on Facebook, uh, we have a pretty big crowd there as well. Thanks to everyone joining me there. Make sure you're following me on all the social medias. I've even been dabbling a little bit in TikTok of late. I feel like I'm a little too old for a lot of TikTok activity, but I've been posting a little bit on, on TikTok, trying to hit all the all the places where people are. So that's what I've been up to lately. But the main social media outlets that I'm on all the time, including Twitter, which is now X, uh, Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you're following me on YouTube as well. A lot of you, of course, are watching me on YouTube. We have a couple of tornado warnings now down to our south and east. This is close to the Zanesville area. This uh, fresh tornado warning that was just issued runs until 8.45. It's for this cell down here, close to Zanesville. Uh, just to the west of there, back towards Gratiot. Uh, tornado warning runs until the bottom of the hour at 8.30. Not a real pristine, pretty looking circulation there, but there's enough of one to prompt the Weather Service Office to issue that tornado warning. Embedded within these tornado warnings, we also have several severe thunderstorm warnings. And if you're just joining us, the idea here this evening is that a lot of these heavy storms are going to track kind of like this, mostly aimed at areas south of Youngstown, the heaviest of the weather anyway. So your chances of severe weather increase as you go down towards the Route 30 corridor in Columbiana County, and especially south of there, closer to Toronto, closer to uh, Wheeling, Steubenville, places like that, uh, even Carroll County, Delroy, um, and south of there, down towards Cadiz, uh, certainly the Cambridge area, Dover, New Philly. Those places have a better chance of seeing the brunt of this cluster rather than areas north of Youngstown up into Trumbull County, up into Mercer County. Yes, there can be some rain and some rumbles up there, but our severe weather risk in those northern areas quite a bit lower than our southern areas this evening. So this is going to be kind of the main train tracks these things are going to ride along, kind of like this, kind of hugging Route 22, um, maybe around and just south of Route 30. So heads up, East Liverpool, Wellsville, Selineville, Highland Town, um, and Summitville, and maybe as far north as Lisbon as well, Hanoverton. Uh, Guilford Lake area, New Garden, heading over towards Alliance. Um, places around those places or, or locations near what I just uh, called out and points to the south of there, you have the best chance of seeing heavy gusty thunderstorms this evening. And that's why the uh, tornado watch, which was issued a little while ago, does not include areas north of Columbiana County. It includes uh, Tuscarawas County, Carroll County, Columbiana County, Beaver County, PA, Hancock, um, and Hancock County and points to the south closer to I-70 and includes Allegheny County over in uh, in the greater Pittsburgh area as well and all the I-70 counties are under that tornado watch but again you're not under the watch in the greater Youngstown area in Mahoning County as a whole and all of Trumbull and Mercer you're not in the tornado watch and I don't expect you to be at any point this evening Looking at my off-camera radar source, yeah, pretty pretty good circulation um, west of Zanesville, right along I-70. Now this is really, really far from most radars, but we are getting some data off the, what we call the terminal radar, uh, which is near the Columbus Airport on the east side of Columbus. Um, and I can see that uh, there's pretty good circulation. Let's, uh, Let's go find that. Right in through here. Just to the west of Zanesville, there's some hail in this and a pretty good circulation ongoing, kind of hugging Interstate 70. This came through Buckeye Lake a little while ago. Uh, Gratiot, I think that's how you pronounce that, Gratiot. 
and uh, heads up around Zanesville. Tornado warning there, and for good reason. That's pretty good, uh, healthy looking circulation. It's probably going to go south of Dresden, uh, probably well south of Coshocton. All of this is pretty far outside of our television market. I, I launched this live stream here at the top of the hour at 8 o'clock just to get everything up and running uh, as the storms approach so we don't have to, to hustle too much when the storms are, begin to affect our viewing area. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we do have some circulation right down through here, Interstate 70, that we'll be keeping a very close eye on. Now, if this holds together, I'd be concerned about this coming up in this direction. Again, closer to Toronto, Ohio, and into the panhandle of West Virginia, maybe over towards uh, Pittsburgh, and especially north of Pittsburgh. And, you know, maybe uh, we have to keep an eye on this as far north as southern Columbiana County. Odds are lower there than off to the south, but maybe it's worth... Uh, it's going to be worth watching here as we go deeper into the 8 o'clock hour. Jenna asking on YouTube, uh, thoughts on what to expect in Pittsburgh? Um, it looks to me like the highest threat overall tonight will probably be north of Pittsburgh, but it may be a close call, uh, and it's not it's not imminent as you you know cross the state line over to Pittsburgh. It's going to be a couple of hours, but by 10, 11 o'clock or so, there's going to be some heavy gusty storms that at least threaten western PA. I think they may weaken some as they come that far to the east, that deep into the evening, but it definitely bears watching from oh, around Pittsburgh off to the west into uh, the panhandle of West Virginia, around Chester, and uh, Newell, and the East Liverpool area and points to the south and west, of course, closer to Cambridge along Interstate 70. Weather Service is issuing a new severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Carroll, Guernsey, Harrison, Jefferson, and Tuscarawas. So let's take a look at that because those are some counties that are getting pretty close to our viewing area. So here's this new warning polygon. It's, it's flashing right here. This is the new severe thunderstorm warning. This uh, encompasses southeastern Tuscarawas County, uh, most of Harrison County, southeastern Carroll County, so this is mostly south and east of Carrollton, and this comes over to areas to the north and west of Steubenville. Um, this is south of Columbiana County, um, but that's that's the new warning polygon, and that's because of this potential hail producing storm that's uh, down north and east of Cambridge, um, just west of Freeport. There's probably some hail right in through here uh, with that storm, and probably some gusty winds as well. So that uh, severe thunderstorm warning for those locations runs until 9 o'clock, so about 45 minutes from right now. So that's a severe thunderstorm warning that we'll be watching. A couple of tornado warnings back towards Interstate 70 that we'll be watching as well. All right, so again, for those just joining us on the live stream, uh, we're streaming this evening because of the potential for severe weather, particularly in our southern television viewing area. If you're watching me from Youngstown, or anywhere in Mahoning County, and especially up into Trumbull and Mercer counties, the rest of our television market, the odds of severe weather in those locations are pretty low this evening. They increase as you go off to the south, especially down towards Route 30, and then south of there, they really start ramping up once you're closer to Interstate 70, where all these warnings are out this evening, south and east of Columbus, over towards Zanesville and Cambridge. So again, if you're watching from Youngstown, Boardman, Poland, Canfield, Austintown, um, up towards Vienna, Cortland, Howland, Warren, kind of the middle of our television viewing area, your severe weather risk in those locations is not zero, but it's pretty small. Um, your chances increase once you're down towards East Liverpool and Wellsville, and certainly down towards Toronto, Steubenville, Wheeling, um, Dover, New Philly, Cambridge, places like that. So again, watching this pretty healthy circulation um, just west of Zanesville. This is pretty far from the Pittsburgh radar, but we'll take a peek at the Pittsburgh uh, radar uh, velocity data. This is right on the edge of the, of the Pittsburgh radar. And yeah, it's just hard to pick out much, but the circulation is basically right here. 
It's really hard to find it on the Pittsburgh radar because the radar beam is so high up in the storm because it's so far from the radar site. The radar beam goes up in elevation as it leaves the radar site because the Earth is curved. Um, and so we're sampling the storm off the Pittsburgh radar really, really high up, and so it's hard to find much. I'm relying on some off-screen radar data that's a little bit closer. It's based near the Columbus Airport, um, which is a little bit closer to this circulation than the Pittsburgh Doppler radar, which is in Moon Township uh, near the Pittsburgh Airport. Back here at home, um, let's bring up the radar here in our television market. So there's not much to show you right now. Um, it's not doing a whole lot. A couple of showers up in far northwestern Trumbull County. Um, that is about it. You know, we had some bouts of heavy rain last night and this morning. It hasn't done a whole lot uh, for the rest of the afternoon into this evening. We expected that lull, but we are expecting right on schedule this evening now that we're past sunset for things to start ramping up over the next couple of hours. The stormiest part of the night in the Youngstown area and throughout our general region will be over the next couple of hours. There'll be some leftover showers overnight, but the highest chance for thunder in that outside chance for severe weather um, will be over the next couple of hours. If you've been paying attention to weather forecasts over the last couple of days, there's been some you know pretty dramatic changes in the expectations for today. Uh, around midday yesterday, there was a big upgrade in the severe weather outlook across the region to include a good chunk of Ohio in what's called the moderate risk for severe weather. That's level four on a one to five scale. Um, we, we think of our severe weather scale as kind of a one to five scale, one being the lowest. Severe weather can still occur in a level one risk, but it's certainly more common as you go up in the, uh, in the risk categories here. And it's pretty uncommon to get a big moderate risk uh, encompassing a lot of Ohio. Now the tweaks they made to the outlook today and when I say they, I'm talking about the Storm Prediction Center, which is part of NOAA, the National Weather Service. Um, they're the ones that issue the watches and warnings, of course, and they officially, officially issue these outlooks as well. Today, they, uh, they started trimming a little bit of this moderate risk, kind of honing in a little bit more on southwest and central Ohio. But enhanced risk, level three, that's a big area, and that includes parts of our TV viewing area. That's, you know, that's another level that we don't get to very often around eastern Ohio and western PA. Um, an enhanced risk generally one, two, three times a year. Um, it's more common in central and western Ohio. Last time in my television market around the Youngstown area, we were in an enhanced risk. It was almost exactly a year ago. It was on April, I believe, the 5th of 2023. The last time we were in a level four moderate risk in our area was 10 and a half years ago, back in the fall of uh, 2013. These higher risk categories are much more common in more severe weather prone areas in our region. Think Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, and especially in more common areas than that, or more uh, tornado prone areas than that. The Deep South, Alabama, Mississippi, and then heading out into what we consider to be the traditional tornado alley, Kansas and Missouri and uh, Oklahoma and Northern Texas, places like that that get a lot of hail and a lot of tornadoes. They see those enhanced, moderate, and even high risks much more frequently than we do around here. So an enhanced risk really gets our attention. And when they issued that big moderate risk with an enhanced risk surrounding it yesterday, we really had to, you know, really communicate that to our audience pretty, pretty brisk, uh, pretty swiftly, because, you know, when we see that, that means the potential is there for some pretty nasty weather. Now, as we've gotten a little bit closer to our event this evening, it is apparent to me and has been for several hours that the overall risk for severe weather in our television viewing area is on the lower end, especially in our central and northern areas. Um, is it commensurate with a, an enhanced risk at this point? No, I don't think it is, but it's certainly elevated enough that we're doing this live stream and paying close attention to what's going on upstream across uh, central and east central parts of Ohio. So all that by way of saying, um, it's been interesting over the last couple of days, big ramp up in our severe weather risk. And then today we've kind of lowered expectations a little bit cautiously in our TV viewing area as the ingredients here locally are just not quite as good as they are to the south and west. So again, we have a couple of tornado warnings that we're tracking um, this evening with pretty healthy looking uh, circulations. Uh, one particularly uh, coming into the Zanesville area right now. Seems like the best circulation is just north and west of Zanesville. Let's stop the loop on that. So anyone who happens to be watching this or anyone who has family and friends down near Zanesville, you got to take shelter from this. There could be a tornado right in through here, right around Hopewell. Um, there's a very healthy looking circulation. I haven't seen any evidence yet or any reports that there's a tornado on the ground. 
um, but it's a pretty healthy looking circulation coming into Zanesville and we may have to watch this all the way over to Cambridge along Interstate uh, 70 as well or maybe it uh, tries to go just north of Cambridge but it may be a very close call over there. That's one of two tornado warnings. The other is farther south. Um, this is uh, east of Lancaster right now. Closer to our television viewing area we do have a severe thunderstorm warning that runs until 9 o'clock. This includes southeastern Tuscarawas County, parts of Harrison County, southeastern Carroll County and heading over to areas north and uh, west of Steubenville. So this is a lot of the Route 22 corridor, Freeport area included, Cadiz, Hopedale. And we'll be watching that particular cell because it may, may you know, want to track into our southern communities. Let's uh, show the loop on this. If this holds together, this, you know, could continue all the way up into the southern tier of Columbiana County. Um, so we may track this all the way up towards towards Lisbon, West Point, East Liverpool, etc. Uh, remains to be seen if it's going to hold together that long. Well, there's some evidence that that may be weakening a little bit. But that'll be the thing we're watching most carefully for our television viewers, our television market, here for the rest of the 8 o'clock hour. Looks to me that that Warren Storm probably just has some small hail with it in the core of this right here. I don't see anything real big with that. And there's probably some gusty winds, but very isolated. It's not a widespread wind threat, but we're going to we're going to watch that one. All right, so again, people are just joining the stream. Uh, we've been uh, live for about 25 minutes now. And just a recap, uh, for those who are watching from the greater Youngstown area and the WFMJ television viewing area, we have a risk for severe weather this evening over the next couple of hours, especially in our southern areas, think Columbiana County. The farther north you are, the lower the risk is. If you're watching from anywhere in Trumbull County, anywhere in Mercer County, Pennsylvania, and even as far south as the 224 corridor in Mahoning County, Youngstown, Canfield, Boardman, Poland, Struthers, um, your risk is fairly low in most of those locations. It's not zero, but it's pretty low. Um, once you go off to the south, the risk increases down towards Route 30, Columbiana County, and south of there as well. If you've been watching the stream for a while, I will apologize for being a little repetitive, but I, I know how these live streams go. People, you know, watch for a little bit, then they tune out, and maybe they're just joining, and we've been talking for a good 25 minutes now, maybe they're just joining. So i got to repeat myself for the new viewers and the viewers who maybe kind of half paying attention or or hopping in and out. So again, farther north, lower chances, farther south, higher chances for heavy gusty storms. The threats this evening um, would be isolated instances of hail, um, some damaging wind gusts, and we, we have enough wind shear, enough changing of the wind direction and speed with height in the atmosphere as you go up in the, into the sky that we are not going to be able to rule out for a little while this evening some tornadic activity. Uh, we've seen evidence of this down towards Interstate 70 here. Uh, over the last half an hour or so. So that's kind of a recap of where we stand here as we approach the bottom of the hour at 8.30. You can see uh, graphically displayed here a flash flood warning is in effect for southern Columbiana County. Uh, we will probably crest around flood stage along the Ohio River, Wellsville, and East Liverpool. We've had close to two inches of rain in many communities in southern Columbiana County since last night with more before that. So in some communities we're coming up on two and a half inches or so um, since yesterday morning. It's quite a bit of rain and you know the ground is now completely saturated so everything just runs off and any additional rain is going to be very very unwelcomed this evening that is for sure. We don't need any more rain but I, I think some places between now pardon me and Wednesday might see an additional inch to even two inches locally um, before all is said and done. We're gonna have more scattered showers overnight tonight and while it's not a washout on Wednesday, there's going to be some showers around, especially in the morning. The afternoon, there might be some popcorn showers, might be some small hair or some grapple coming out of any isolated showers Wednesday afternoon. But any raindrops would be unwelcome. We just have had a little bit too much rain in our area over the last couple of days. That's why the Weather Service has issued these flood warnings for some areas. It's a uh, flood watch generally that uh, encompasses a large chunk of real estate 
a lot of Ohio under a flood watch. Most of Pennsylvania, almost the entire state of, the, of Pennsylvania, with the exception of the northwestern corner of the state, under a flood watch. And the, those brighter greens are flood warnings. A lot of those are along rivers that are uh, close to exceeding their banks or are currently flooding in a lot of Ohio and western PA as well. And again, this is all part of a pretty big system that has a severe weather risk on the warm side. All the red boxes are tornado watches all the way down to the beaches along the Gulf Coast, up into the Appalachians, up into Ohio, western Pennsylvania, encompassed in that tornado watch. And on the cold side of this, yes, that's snow and quite a bit of it in Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, and we're gearing up for heavy snow over into the northeastern U.S. in the mountainous areas, especially in Vermont, New Hampshire, northern New York, into Maine as well. So, you know, this is pretty typical stuff for uh, the middle of winter or the middle of spring, I should say, to have winter in some places and summer, basically, in others. It's uh, especially common here in the month of April. It becomes a little less common to have the snow component as we get into late spring into the month of May. All right, so it's 8.30. We have a severe thunderstorm warning until 9 for areas to the south of our television viewing area, uh, south and east of New Philly and Dover. Um, we have a couple of tornado warnings down across central Ohio, close to Interstate 70, close to the Zanesville area. They run for another 15 minutes or so. The circulation is boy, in radar no man's land at this point, but it's basically right around the Zanesville area or just north of Zanesville, north of Interstate 70. This is a really tough area to track circulations on radar because uh, the, the uh, radars just, you know, the Cleveland radar is really far away. The Pittsburgh radar is still really far away. The Wilmington, Ohio radar out in southwest Ohio is really far away. The Charleston, West Virginia radar is pretty far away. Southeast Ohio is one of those radar holes that uh, it's unfortunate that we have those, but we do. There are some parts of, of uh, the U.S. that radar coverage is pretty poor, and Southeast Ohio is one of them. They're going to continue that severe thunderstorm warning uh, for southeastern Tuscarawas County and adjacent counties here for a little while longer. We got what looks, looks like spilled paint on the radar this evening. Let's take off the warning information and put a loop on the radar. And uh, as you can see, a lot of lightning and thunder and some heavy rain pushing off to the east. Now you'll notice the lack of lightning and thunder once you're far enough to the north in the more stable air of northeast Ohio and northwest PA. We do have some lightning up over Lake Erie right now, right along the shoreline, but it's much more concentrated, of course, down across Interstate 70. And as we've been discussing on our live stream, right in through here, these are the train tracks where severe weather is most likely. And the heart of it is going to be something like this. Um, close to Route 22, close to Route 30, and points to the south and east. Your chances of severe weather decrease off to the north. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those situations that we're going to be watching carefully. Even though I, I don't think this is a big severe weather outbreak for our television viewing area, it's a high enough risk with enough wind shear aloft that we got to really babysit most of this stuff until it completely clears our area this evening. Show you those uh, rain totals over the last 24 hours in case you missed, a, missed this earlier. We don't want any more rain, that's for sure. Uh, I had a little water in my basement uh, this morning, and a lot of our rivers and creeks and streams are running high. These are some actual rain gauges across our area. These are all unofficial numbers. These are personal weather stations. Some of these are maintained better than others, but most of this data looks pretty good to me this evening. Most of this data looks legit. A general inch to two inches, probably a bad reading over there towards Slippery Rock, um, but a general inch to two inches just over the last 24 hours. And when we go back 48 hours, these are, uh, at, these are official observations at most regional airports. 1.32 inches at the Youngstown Warren Airport in Vienna. But look at these numbers across Interstate 70. Three inches in Zanesville, almost three in Columbus, and a good two and a half or so from Pittsburgh over towards Wheeling. So, yeah, a lot of rain, especially last night and this morning. It really, really poured in a lot of areas last night into the first half of the uh, day today. It was a good morning to sleep in if you didn't have to get up and go to work. That is for sure. All right, so welcome everyone to our live streaming coverage. If you're new to our coverage, um, we, we do these live streams when we have the threat for severe weather, especially that will impact far eastern Ohio and western PA. If you're new to how we kind of display things graphically, you may not be used to radars displaying lightning like this where you see a lot of plus signs. 
Um, all of that is lightning. We differentiate on our radar products between negative voltage lightning, positive voltage lightning, because even though it's all dangerous, the ones that have a positive voltage have a higher voltage, and they tend to hit things on the ground more than the negative voltage strikes, which more often than not stay up in the clouds, but the positive voltage strikes, those are the ones that like to come down and hit trees and hit other things on the ground. So those tend to be a little more dangerous. But as I always say, all lightning is dangerous. You got to take it all seriously. All right, new severe thunderstorm warning, Coshocton, Guernsey, Muskingum, Noble, and Tuscarawas. So let's show you that one that just came across the wire. That's going to be this one. So this is southern Tuscarawas, uh, down into the Cambridge area. This is for the storm that produced the tornado warning back towards Zanesville. The circulation uh, is still evident, but pretty unclear as to whether it remains a big threat. Um, the circulation now north and east of Zanesville. Um, the Weather Service opted for a new severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag instead of a new tornado warning due to the uncertainty whether we have a legit circulation. Again, we're in kind of radar no man's land here until this stuff gets closer to Interstate 77 and points east of there, you get closer to the Pittsburgh radar. Um, stuff is really hard to track on the radar in terms of the wind data. We can track the rain data fairly easily, but when we try to pick out which direction the wind is blowing, how fast it's blowing, whether or not we're getting a circulation in the wind field, the farther you are away from a radar source, the harder it is to do that because the radar beam is sampling the storm up several thousand feet. And that's data that isn't real useful. It's maybe not real pertinent as to what's going on down here near the ground where we are. We don't care if it's a tight circulation at 7,000 feet above our heads necessarily. We want to know if there's a tight circulation 500 feet or 1,000 feet above our heads. And again, it's a challenge in these kind of radar holes in Southeast Ohio is definitely one of those holes. Back here in the greater Youngstown area, not a lot going on here locally, but uh, that's going to change here as we head towards 9 o'clock. I think the 9 and 10 o'clock hours will be pretty wet here locally. We have a couple of lightning strikes over towards Canton and Alliance, but everything there is, is sub-severe. We are going to keep an eye on this warned cell down here, uh, southeast of New Philly and Eurexville. Um, if this holds together, this could bring a gusty uh, round of weather a noisy round of weather to communities along the Route 39 corridor from Carrollton over towards Mechanicstown, over towards Selineville, Highland Town, over towards East Liverpool, Wellsville, Glenmore, Calcutta, and maybe, maybe as far north as, as West Point and, and uh, Lisbon as well. But that remains to be seen. That's why we have a severe thunderstorm warning until the top of the hour at 9 for many of those communities down towards Route uh, 250 and Route 22, down towards Cadiz. Um, that's the nearest warned cell to our television viewing area right now, but we have a whole slew of warnings. Look at all this stuff. It looks like, again, spilled paint. Let's uh, clean this up a little bit. We'll take off the radar momentarily here. You can see all that's going on. All the kind of teal colors are flood advisories. All the orange colors are severe thunderstorm warnings. All these purple colors are tornado warnings. The green flash flood warnings. Weather service offices have been, been uh, very busy. Uh, today, that is for sure. This is a dynamic system that's uh, moving through the area. All right, so let's take a little bit of a peek at the, let's take another peek at that uh, Pittsburgh radar data. Again, we're pretty far away, but may be able to find something useful here. You can kind of pick it out right here, the circulation. Adamsville, Dresden, uh, just east of Zanesville. This is a, this is a storm that uh, means some business here along Route 22 and Interstate 70 in Southeast Ohio. For the first time here in our live coverage, let's uh, take off the warning information. We'll do a little storm track here, show you the uh, kind of expected arrival times for a lot of this activity.
Along the uh, kind of warned part of this storm down here, you know, we're probably looking at close to the top of the hour once you get towards East Liverpool, towards Toronto along the Ohio River, um, Wellsville, 908, East Liverpool again, 9 o'clock, 910, something like that, and maybe as far north as Lisbon as we head towards 915. Again, that's for the cell that currently has a uh, severe thunderstorm warning on it down to our south. For the other activity, again, this is going to be kind of a rough estimate because the radar is so messy down through here, but let's track starting like right here, and we'll do something like, maybe like this. Just rough, you know, rough uh, times here, but uh, for kind of, kind of sort of the leading edge of our cluster of storms and again this is a little bit hard because everything's kind of messy here but uh, you know looking at for this main line that's closer to interstate 70 or approaching interstate 77 I should say uh, right now you know we're looking at about 930 East Liverpool um, maybe a little before that in Lisbon and yes you're gonna get some rumbles and some rain out of this farther to the north in Youngstown and Boardman and Poland and Warren and places like that Sharon um, but uh, the severe weather risk is definitely lower in those locations. So, you know, we're looking at a, a pretty busy, I think, 9 o'clock hour, and maybe parts of the 10 o'clock hour as well, as all this activity is moving pretty quickly. That's the one thing that is nice this evening, because, again, we don't want any more rain. Um, everything's moving at at least 50 miles per hour. Um, so the forward speed is definitely working in our favor. So the heaviest of the weather is not going to sit over one location for very long. You can see it's a pretty wide swath here. Um, but at the very least, it is moving at a pretty rapid pace. All right, thanks so once again to everyone who's joining me. Big crowd here on uh, on YouTube and on Facebook this evening. Thanks to all your comments. Thanks for all your comments, I should say. Carla mentioning on Facebook, they never go into anything for Mercer County. It's like once they hit the PA Ohio line, they stop paying attention. Carla, uh, we have been uh, streaming now for about 40 minutes, and we're going to keep repeating ourselves uh, over and over again. And apologies if I haven't mentioned Mercer in the last five minutes. Um, but generally, the idea here is that Mercer County is very unlikely to have severe weather this evening, as we've been talking about all day and all evening. Um, the risk for severe weather is definitely highest to the south down towards Columbiana County. Once you get into Mahoning County and especially up into Trumbull and Mercer counties, the risk is not zero, but it's pretty low for any severe weather in those locations. Some rain, some rumbles of thunder, yes, but the risk for damaging wind gusts and isolated tornadoes quite a bit higher off to the south. That's just the nature of working in in the media, in, tel in television. Everybody thinks you hate their hometown. <laughs> and well, that's not true at all. Just you can't keep you can't mention uh, every single location, every every single minute. You just have to keep repeating yourself as much as you can. So this is what the radar looks like as of uh, 8:42. Let's put the warning information back on, and we are looking at a severe thunderstorm warning still in effect until the top of the hour around the Cadiz area, south of Columbiana County, and we have a couple of tornado warnings still out for uh, Zanesville and Cambridge along and just north of Interstate 70 and coming over towards the I-77 corridor into southeast Ohio, and this is south of Tuscross County, down uh, closer to Cambridge. The 77 and Interstate 70 interchange getting a doozy of a storm right now. I went to school at Ohio State and drove up into Tuscross County uh, many, many times over the years uh, from, from the Columbus area, so I'm very familiar with this part of Ohio and that, uh, that uh, particular intersection of interstates, I-70 and 77. So, yeah, they're getting a doozy of a storm around there right now. Lots of flood warnings and watches out as well. Mentioned this earlier, but yeah, we've had too much rain, and for good reason, the uh, Weather Service offices have been busy issuing flood watches today for almost the entire state of Pennsylvania and a good chunk of Ohio as well. The uh, areas that are not under a flood watch in Ohio include far northern Ohio, western Ohio as well, northwestern Pennsylvania, including Mercer County, not under a flood watch. But you are on a flood watch in Lawrence County, PA, in Mahoning and Columbiana counties in Ohio, and the rest of eastern Ohio and western PA as well. 
Weather service is going to expire the tornado warning for Muskingum County. Weather service in Pittsburgh is concerned about uh, a long duration rain event exacerbating flooding around the Pittsburgh metro area here in about an hour. They've had a lot of rain. They've had over two inches of rain in Pittsburgh over the last 48 hours, and they certainly don't need any more down there. And there is concern, growing concern, for this heavy rain corridor coming east and bringing unwelcomed amounts of rain to far eastern Ohio, the panhandle of West Virginia, and into western PA as well. All right, so more questions on social media. What about this town? What about that town? Um, thanks to everyone who's just joining us. We've been on online now for about 45 minutes, and we'll keep this up uh, here into the 9 o'clock hour to kind of babysit everything coming east and make sure we don't have a whole slew of warnings. Um, the severe weather risk in our television viewing area in the Youngstown area, highest to the south, lower to the north. Not much of a severe weather risk once you go north of 224 up into the Youngstown area and certainly up into Trumbull and Mercer. Your chances increase of a gusty storm before the evening is through as you go off towards Salem, Columbiana, the Route 30 corridor, including the Lisbon area, down towards East Liverpool and the Ohio River. And the overall risk is probably at its highest right now, um, down towards Route 22, closer to Interstate 70. So think places like Eurexville, Denison, Cambridge, um, and eventually Wheeling and Steubenville, and eventually Pittsburgh. That's probably gonna be our hot spot here as we go through the uh, evening. Evelyn on YouTube mentioning hearing thunder near Newton Falls and Lordstown right now. Yeah, we are getting some rumbles, that is for sure. And rain and rumbles will remain a possibility in these areas that I'm saying that the severe weather risk is low. You can have some rumbles of thunder, and we're picking up some lightning strikes right now around Craig Beach and Palmyra, Newton Falls area. So that's what you're hearing right now, some lightning and thunder in through there. There's a few more lightning strikes back towards, oh, uh, North Canton, heading over towards Atwater, uh, Alliance area as well. All that is just some you know, kind of garden variety thunder activity and nothing uh, real concerning in those locations. Yeah, I do think this is going to pan out to be mostly to the uh, mostly to the south of Route 30 um, in this zone that I'm drawing right here. So um, Southern Columbiana County, uh, Hancock County, Jefferson County, uh, Beaver County, PA, Heading down towards the Greater Pittsburgh area, Wheeling, Steubenville, Cambridge, Cat is probably around and south of Dover, New Philly. That's going to be the corridor in the next hour that has the best chance of these storms meaning some business as they roll on through. Um, I think the writing is on the wall. That's where our that's where our hot spot is going to be. And again, for those. Who are just joining us? Uh, we'll keep, uh, you know, kind of repeating ourselves a little bit. Tornado watch uh, in effect this evening from Columbiana County on south. This includes Carroll, Tuscarawas, um, into uh, Beaver County, PA, Jefferson County, Hancock County, the Greater Pittsburgh area. No watches north of there. There won't be any watches north of there. You will never be under a tornado or a severe thunderstorm watch in Mahoning County, uh, Trumbull County, Mercer County, probably not Lawrence County either um, this evening. All the severe weather looks to miss you to the south. But we do have an elevated risk, that is for sure, once you go far enough to the south. And this includes um, some of our communities in the far southern part of Columbiana County. So we've got to keep, you know, due diligence here through the 9 o'clock hour in East Liverpool and West Point and Selineville and heading back towards Atwood Lake in Carroll County and then south of there closer to Cadiz, uh, Burgles, Burgholes, Burgholes. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> um, down towards Route 22 as well. You know, I've got pronunci pronunciations pretty down for, you know, most Eastern Ohio communities, but there's still a few that, you know, every now and then just kind of trip me up in the moment. That's that's definitely one of them. When I first started at WFMJ, I had to learn all the all the really tough ones like Selineville, uh, East Palestine, not Palestine. You know, when I first came here and was not familiar with some of these communities. I had to learn those pretty quickly so that you don't uh, look silly on uh, on television or on live streams like this. So, but uh, I've been here long enough now that uh, I know all of those. You know, I could recite all of those in my sleep. <laughs> that is for sure. Um, anyway, tornado warning still out. Uh, this is down near the Cambridge area. 
pretty healthy circulation still down here. Now we're getting closer to the Pittsburgh radar source. And so the radar data is becoming a little more useful, but it's still not great. Seems to me there's still a pretty decent enough circulation northwest of Cambridge um, back towards Adamsville right now. And again, to the untrained eye, you may think, what in the world is all this? It looks like spilled paint. What we're looking for here is what we call a couplet, a, a, a couplet of what we're looking at here is the wind direction and speed. The brighter blues, the faster the winds. Um, the winds that are blowing towards the Pittsburgh radar site are in the greens and blues. Any winds that are blowing away from the Pittsburgh radar site are more gray and then eventually red and yellow. We don't see a lot of red and yellow, but this right here, a little circulation still, um, it's not a real great couplet, but again, we're pretty far away from the Pittsburgh radar source. It's really not until you get across I-77 that you start to have some much better data from the Pittsburgh radar. I mentioned earlier on this live stream, it's, it's a frustrating part of, of radar meteorology um, that there are radar holes in the United States, and one of them is in southeast Ohio, where you're really far from most radar sites. And so picking out wind data when you're really far away is tough. You can see the rain and snow pretty well, but when the radar beam is sampling a storm 7,000 feet above our heads, that doesn't tell you a whole lot about any circulations that are happening below that radar beam. And circulations below that beam, closer to 1,000 feet above our heads, that's what we really care about when we're trying to pick out a potential tornadic circulations. Back here in our television viewing area, for those just uh, joining, and if you're watching on YouTube and not from my television market, I'm a television meteorologist in Youngstown, which is near the Ohio-Pennsylvania line. We have some rain, we have some rumbles. Right now the most common rumbles are in our western part of Columbiana County, Mahoning County, and southwestern Trumbull. All of this is sub-severe and uh, just some, some mood, lightning and thunder, if you will. Nothing to really be all that concerned about. We just don't want any more rain, and some of this rain is coming down at a decent clip from Newton Falls back towards Craig Beach, um, down towards Berlin, Sebring, Beloit, um, back towards New Franklin as well. And some bouts of heavier rain uh, will start occurring in more and more communities here as we head towards the top of the hour and into the 9 o'clock hour. So Warren, Niles, uh, heading down towards Austintown, Canfield, Ellsworth, Salem, uh, New Garden, Hanoverton, Lisbon, those are some of the places they're going to see some pretty decent rain rates once again here in the near term, and I think you will pretty soon in Salineville as well. Um, the farther north and northeast you are, the longer it's going to be until you get in on some of this heavier rain action, better chances of lightning and thunder. So if you're watching from Sharon, Greenville, Mercer, Grove City, Fredonia, um, Newcastle, New Wilmington, um, Slippery Rock, it's going to be you know closer to 10 o'clock before a lot of you see some heavier rain rates and some uh, some flashes of lightning and some thunder. I actually put the I'm gonna go off off camera on our streams here for just a moment. It's on a couple of our streams while I post to social media. <coughs> Going to post a uh, an update on that worn storm south of our TV viewing area.
guys. Thanks for bearing with me there. Whenever I do these live streams, it becomes, especially if it's really busy and we have a lot of warnings, um, it becomes increasingly difficult to do other do other th other things other than just talk to you here on <laughs> on the live stream. I've got to remember that occasionally I've got to you know keep people uh, abreast of what's going on who may not be watching this stream, just my regular social media followers. So got to feed that beast sometimes as well. And right now, since we don't have any active warnings in our television viewing area, it's a little easier for me to step away for a minute and take care of that business. But yeah, it's it's a challenge sometimes if we've got a whole bunch of warnings to stop talking long enough to to post to social media. Again, this is a warned storm um, that uh, the warning is going to expire in six minutes. And it looks to me like they probably will not extend the warning farther to the north and east. Um, I don't see anything too crazy going on with this warm storm around Cadiz. This is approaching uh, Island Creek, Burgles, uh, Selineville eventually as well. I think this is going to be a heavy storm that's coming towards East Liverpool though. Selineville, Highland Town, um, uh, Glenmore, Calcutta as well. I think this will be a you know pretty noisy, hefty storm with some heavy rain and some lightning. We certainly don't want any more rain down in this part of our area. Um, but it looks to me to be sub-severe right now, so I'm going to be surprised if we have an additional warning issued with this. I think this warning will be allowed to expire at 9 p.m. And uh, a, a, a new warning downstream to me seems pretty unlikely um, as this comes in this direction like this. But we're going to continue to keep an eye on that. In fact, there you go. The Pittsburgh Weather Service office is going to expire that severe thunderstorm warning. Graphically speaking, this is going to stay on our graphics system for another couple of minutes, but they just expired or discontinued this warning right here, the one I was just just talking about. So they're seeing what I'm seeing in that that cell looks sub-severe right now. Here's our active tornado warning down across southeast Ohio near the intersection of I-70 and 77 right around Cambridge. This circulation is pretty ragged and again it's it's a challenge to put much stock in the radar data because of where it's at exactly which is pretty far away from most radar sites but there could still be some circulation in through here right around the Cambridge area will this impact our television viewing area up towards Youngstown that seems unlikely to me it looks to me like this will continue to be more of a threat for areas um, just north of Interstate 70 and maybe eventually this particular cell um, could be more of a threat for the Weirton area, places like that, um, Steubenville, maybe just north of Wheeling. But for the heart of our TV viewing area, I'm, I don't think that tornado warned circulation that we're looking at right now is going to be too much of a threat. It probably is going to miss us to the south. Here's the radar loop as we approach the top of the hour. We'll keep this live stream going for a little while longer. I'm going to keep it going as long as we have the threat anyway for um, any severe weather in our television market. Once I don't think we will have any, I'll you know kind of kind of discontinue this and get ready for our 11 o'clock newscast. But we're approaching 9 p.m. We started this at 8 p.m. in anticipation of a low-end severe weather threat for the greater Youngstown area. Higher risks to our south. The overall risk all day today became more and more apparent that this is going to be more of a Interstate 70 special, if you will. Um, and yeah, some, some areas north of there certainly getting some heavy storms. Um, but the risk is overall a fair amount lower once you get into Northeast Ohio and into Northwest PA as well. The reason for that didn't warm up very much in our area today. It got into the 50s, but the warm front really has struggled to lift much farther north than our area. That warm front has been very plain, very easy to see when you bring up the dew points. Dew points are a measure of how much moisture is in the air. And you can kind of see where our warm front is. It's kind of like right here. And because it didn't lift all the way through and completely clear our area, the atmosphere around the Youngstown area and into Western PA, across the I-79 corridor, the I-80 corridor in Western PA, atmosphere is just not as unstable here locally. We just don't have the ingredients, quite as, quite as good of ingredients, quite as good of a recipe, if you will. Um, for severe weather in our part of the Buckeye State and into uh, Western PA. As Columbus, where dew points got into the 60s for a while today, the sun came out for a little while, the atmosphere destabilized, got into the 70s temperature-wise in Southwest Ohio. 
earlier on today. So that's the reason why our risk is lower here locally. It's also the reason why the tornado watch, which, which was uh, issued about an, maybe an hour and a half ago at this point, uh, does not include most of Northeast Ohio and Northwest PA. It includes Columbia and County and points south. They're going to start chopping away at this tornado watch here pretty soon, the western side of it. Um, these watches are issued by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, and then the local National Weather Service offices are responsible for babysitting the watches, discontinuing them as they see fit. The uh, Storm Prediction Center kind of hands the responsibility off to our local uh, severe, or our, our local National Weather Service offices. And real quickly, I'll find a graphic here, just in case, you know, for those who are watching who, who don't know. Uh, let's see here. Find a graphic that displays who covers our local area. These counties are covered by the Cleveland National Weather Service Office. It includes in our television viewing area Mahoning and Trumbull. Um, the rest of our viewing area is covered by the Pittsburgh National Weather Service Office. That includes Columbiana County, Mercer, and Lawrence Counties, uh, covered by the Pittsburgh National Weather Service Office. So our television market is served by two different weather service offices. The Wilmington, Ohio office covers Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton. Wilmington is near I-71, about halfway between Columbus and Cincinnati. So, uh, and Northwest Ohio is kind of covered uh, a mix between Cleveland, uh, an office that's based in, in northwestern Indiana, and also the Detroit National Weather Service office covers a couple of counties in northwest Ohio. Someone on YouTube mentioning they're starting to hear the thunder in Wellsville. Someone on YouTube uh, asking why are the strike numbers moving up and down as the as I move around on the maps, um, the strike numbers change, and also uh, that's an instantaneous reading of how much lightning there is, and that of course changes almost every second. So that's why another reason why some of those numbers will change. One tornado warning on the map this evening, and actually right now we only have one severe thunderstorm warning. And that's with the circulation that's around Cambridge right now. Everything else is sub-severe, and that's what we like to see. Let's head back uh, into our television viewing area here and show you what's going on. Again, seeing some comments about hearing some rumbles of thunder, and you certainly are in some places. Uh, right now we have a couple of lightning strikes. Pretty good lightning show in western Mahoning County. This is out uh, along 224 near Berlin, and then heading up uh, 534, closer to Craig Beach and uh, into the Newton Falls area as well. A few claps of thunder out there. Uh, this is coming towards Route 45, Lordstown down towards Ellsworth. And we're getting some pockets of heavier rain. Hartford, Yankee Lake, uh, Vienna, Fowler, Cortland. Rain's lighter elsewhere. Getting some rumbles, though, in southern Columbiana County, where it's starting to rain at a decent clip. And more pronounced lightning down here, closer to Route 22, around the Steubenville area. Hopedale. This is the part, or the little appendage of the storm system that had a warning on it earlier, a severe thunderstorm warning. But that was allowed to expire at the top of the hour at 9 o'clock. It looks sub-severe. It's a noisy storm. But it looks largely sub-severe right now. I'm gonna, you know, continue babysitting that one. Actually, uh, now that we're looking at that storm, let's look at the what we call the uh, terminal radar out of the uh, Pittsburgh area. We're looking at velocity data here, and I don't see anything really crazy. Don't don't see any bright reds or greens. Uh, let's look at the more powerful Pittsburgh Doppler radar close to the Pittsburgh airport. And again, not really picking up on a whole lot of wind out here. So it's a noisy storm, but sub-severe. But I'll tell you, when you look at the uh, storm reports over the last couple of days, boy, has it been busy. Let's actually plot up, while we have a second, the last 48 hours of storm reports. And look at this mess across the country. It's been an active 
first couple of days of April nationwide, including a handful of tornadoes out in Oklahoma and Kansas, so one in Illinois. We had a couple down in uh, the Tennessee Valley at a funnel cloud report earlier southeast of Columbus. Let's actually query that one and see what that text says. That was around Fairfield at 8.11, a funnel cloud. No report of anything touching the ground, though. And, of course, a lot of reports of flooding across eastern Ohio into western PA as well. There's our tornado warning until 9.30. Again, this is uh, southeast Ohio around the intersection of Interstate 70 and 77 around Cambridge. Um, we've been tracking the circulation since it was back towards Zanesville along Interstate 70. The circulation to me does not look super impressive, but you got to take that with a bit of grain of salt because of where this is located. Pretty far away from most radar sources, although it's getting closer to the Pittsburgh radar and uh, we will uh, continue watching that. That's the only thing that has a warning on it that is in eastern Ohio right now. So, you know, it, it looked all afternoon like the, the instability, the ingredients for severe weather, would lower substantially as we got into the evening across the state, uh, the eastern part of the state, I should say. And when you look at this modeled instability index or convective available potential energy, it's CAPE, CAPE is what we call it in the weather business. It all is pretty low. This is not a very unstable atmosphere. Um, it's not a particularly hot and humid atmosphere. A lot of wind shear aloft though. But the atmosphere itself is not really unstable. It was more unstable earlier out here when the sun came out for a little while and dew points got up into the 60s. But these are pretty meager instability numbers across uh, eastern Ohio and into western Pennsylvania as well. Um, we can kind of look at an indice here that is kind of a mix of instability and wind shear. And coming in, this is what it looked like earlier. And then this evening, you can kind of see how those values start to decrease. So this was earlier, this is more now. So everything is kind of encountering an environment that is just not as good as it was earlier on today. And this is a good thing. You know, some people root for storms, some people like a good thunderstorm, and I count myself among, amongst those people who enjoys a good thunderstorm, but you don't want to root for severe weather. Anytime you find yourself maybe rooting for heavy storms, damaging storms, even, you got to remember that, you know, that potentially is someone's livelihood that is being impacted greatly by a heavy storm. So you got to be a little bit careful not rooting too much for these things. In our television viewing area, again, we've got a pretty good lightning show ongoing. Right now in Mahoning County, especially, a fair amount of lightning and thunder out towards Ellsworth and Berlin. This is uh, coming across Route 45 right now. This is sub severe, but it's a pretty good uh, bout of rain. A little puff of wind. Doesn't look to me that there's anything, anything more than pea-sized hail, and that's probably even pushing it. I think this is mostly just a few rumbles of thunder embedded in some in some pockets of heavy rain in western Mahoning County right now. And it's raining at a pretty good clip now in western, southern, and central parts of Columbiana County. Getting some uh, some soakers around Hanoverton, Guilford Lake, Lisbon, up towards Salem and Damascus, Washingtonville. And right down Route 30 and Route 11, closer to the West Point area, and down towards Calcutta as well. This is where the rain gets really heavy, really some some real frog stranglers down here, stragglers, strangler, stranglers, frog stranglers, um, down here uh, closer to Weirton and Steubenville. So anyone anyway, heading down to uh, Route 7 out of East Liverpool, hugging the Ohio River and heading down towards Toronto and Steubenville, that is no fun right now. We're going to get a new tornado warning down towards Muskingum County as the Weather Service is still tracking some circulations down here. This is independent of of what we've been watching up near Cambridge. This is the brand new warning down here. This is south of Interstate 70. So now we have a pair of tornado warnings down there. I don't think that southern one, southern one is much of a concern for most of my audience that's watching me on, uh, used to watching me on television in the, in the Youngstown area. 
if you're watching me uh, and you're in the Youngstown area again, we've been live streaming for a little over an hour now, and the bottom line is some rain, some rumbles of thunder, but a very low and severe weather risk from here on out in Mahoning County, in Trumbull County, and in Mercer and Lawrence Counties in PA. Once you get down into Columbiana County, we still can't quite totally rule out a heavy, gusty storm before the evening is through, probably before the 9 o'clock hour is through, in our southernmost communities. So I think your chances really increase as you go down towards the Ohio River, and especially south of there. Um, this is more down towards the Wheeling television market, and down towards Interstate 70, where the risk overall is highest. Again, if you're watching me from uh, our northern television market, Warren, Niles, Southington, Newton Falls, Sharon, Wheatland, um, West Middlesex, Hubbard, over towards Mer Mercer, Grove City, Greenville, all of those places. Rain and rumbles, that should be about it. Uh, the rain's not great news, but at least you're uh, probably out of the woods in terms of any severe weather threat in many of those locations. I'm going to pause for just a second and post one more thing on social media here, so just bear with me for just one second. All right, we are back. Uh, again, a couple of tornado warnings in southeast Ohio right now. And the heaviest of the weather that's closest to our television viewing area is right down here. Coming into Toronto and East Liverpool um, in the next 15 minutes or so, heads up there over towards Ohioville into Western PA. A lot of Beaver County is going to get in on some of this activity. This is largely sub-severe, but it's a good lightning show and, and some really torrential downpours and exacerbated flooding uh, along creeks and rivers and any neighborhoods that have some flooding issues. Um, uh, this is not great news um, coming your way in the next 15 to 20 minutes or so. So, so again, locations that we're highlighting here, including anywhere around and near East Liverpool, Heading over towards Chester, Newell, West Virginia, and then uh, down Route 30 uh, into the hilly terrain across the Panhandle of West Virginia and into Western PA. Uh, this is this is unwelcome rain. These are areas that have had a lot of rain over the last 36 hours, and some uh, intense rumbles of thunder, along with some bouts of heavy rain right now. The Austin Town area, and especially to the west as you travel along Kirk Road west of 46. Um, Palmyra Road heading over towards Route 45. Heavy, heavy bouts of rain. Up in Trumbull County, rain and rumbles up here. Mineral Ridge, Niles, Lordstown, Howland, and over in Mercer County. Not much to show you over here, and there hasn't been so far this evening. It's raining in our northern communities, but very little thunder and lightning right now from Greenville on east. So there's just not much going on, not much to highlight in Mercer County as we speak, but you'll get in on some rain and some rumbles certainly before the night is through. So let's uh, do another storm track here. We'll take off the warning information. Give you some uh, arrival times here for this heavy band of storms. 
We'll just track it out like this over the next half an hour or so. So heads up East Liverpool here in about anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes from right now. Uh, again, communities surrounding East Liverpool as well. And over into Beaver and Butler counties in PA. Uh, this will uh, eventually impact a lot of communities over there. This is a pretty, pretty, you know, summer like a thunder shower or thunderstorm moving through with a lot of lightning and some heavy rainfall rates. The uh, specific rainfall rates down here. Around Island Creek in Toronto, you know, this is up to an inch or so per hour. Pretty heavy rain. Now we see rates higher than this all the time in the summer when we get thunderstorms, but these are pretty impressive rates for this time of the year in particular. And certainly this will be enough to uh, cause more problems in areas that have already had some problems with too much rain since the start of the day yesterday. We had some bouts of heavy rain, especially last night and this morning in many of those communities. Elsewhere, rain and a few rumbles of thunder, although the lightning is a little less intense than it was five or 10 minutes ago in Mahoning County. A couple of uh, positive voltage lightning strikes up here towards Niles. The tornado warnings that are on the board right now, we still have the one near Cambridge in effect until 930. The newest one is south of I-70 until 945. This uh, Cambridge area circulation, it looks to me, is going to go like this. And, you know, if the circulation holds together, it'll be interesting to see if it does. But, you know, it may be eventually a problem in the in the Cadiz area, and maybe over towards Weirton as well. So those are the two tornado warnings that are on the board. And we currently, other than those two tornado warnings, we currently have no severe thunderstorm warnings on the board anywhere. But I'm gonna stick with the stream here for a little while longer while we kind of, you know, kind of babysit a lot of this stuff. Cause I just don't trust 100% just yet that uh, we're not gonna have any, any sort of warnings in our Southern viewing area here before the nine o'clock hour is through. Big, big thunder in Niles. A couple of commenters on YouTube saying, yeah, a couple of positive voltage strikes up there. Those are the ones that hit things on the ground more often and have a higher voltage and therefore produce louder thunder a lot of times. So, yeah, a couple of pretty loud claps right in the Niles area right now. Niles Mineral Ridge. couple of our local cameras. This is uh, not Colombian, of course. This is Boardman showing the wet scene through here. It is definitely raining in the Boardman area. We'll see if we see any lightning strikes on our camera here. For those not familiar with this particular camera, this is up on a billboard near the Walgreens, corner of 224 and Market Street in Boardman. Men's Warehouse over here. McDonald's is over here. Uh, BJ's Brew House over here. And of course, in this direction is also the Southern Park Mall. We're facing west here towards the Canfield area along Route 224 and some heavy, heavy rain apparent there. Our other active camera right now is down in Columbiana. The banner's gonna be wrong, I think, on this. Yeah, this one says Boardman, but uh, this, of course, is the traffic circle in Columbiana. Once it gets dark, especially when it's not Christmas time and the lights are bright and the trees up down here, this camera, it's a little hard to see what's going on sometimes. Um, the, the lighting is not great after dark down here in Columbiana. That is for sure. Take a couple of, uh, we'll take a couple of peeks at the ODOT cameras. Uh, this one is Route 80 and State Route 193, so around Liberty. Uh, wet road surface there. Got another active ODOT camera here. This one is near Austin Town. Um, 
routes uh, 80 and the 11 and 711 interchange. Um, visibility looking okay there. So, you know, rain, but nothing, nothing too crazy in that particular location. And here's the radar loop in our television market. Take off the warnings here. Again, a couple of flood warnings out tonight down towards the Ohio River. Uh, rain and rumbles moving through a good chunk of Mahoning County, uh, southeastern and central Trumbull County right now. Uh, I'm looking up at our Boardman camera here in the weather office and seeing some a couple of flashes of pretty bright lightning uh, in the uh, in the 224 corridor right now. Getting some uh, flashes of lightning up towards Greenville and northwestern Mercer County and a fair amount of moderate rain encompassing Columbiana County as well. Rainy night. One thing off camera, I'm just or off uh, off screen here on my other radar source. I'm keeping a little bit of an eye on is down in area south of East Liverpool, Jefferson County. This little guy right here, I'm just gonna babysit that. That's a little bit squirrely looking. Right now, I'm not real concerned, but I'm going to babysit that for a little while longer. This is a possible weak circulation trying to form down here in uh, Jefferson County. Uh, this is west of Island Creek in Toronto. This is with the heavier band of, of storms that's pushing north and east. Now, you know, all of this is heading in this direction. So this will bear watching here for a little bit longer. It's definitely not a real tight circulation, but a little circulation that just caught my eye that I'm going to watch. It's embedded in that band of heavier rain that extends from Atwood Lake, the Carrollton and Delroy areas, Sherrodsville. Heading out to the east um, and just south now of uh, Selineville and Wellsville. So Route 213, Route 7. Again, that's no fun along the Ohio River on Route 7 right now, heading down through New Cumberland, the Toronto area. Pretty legit thunderstorms coming northward, uh, impacting uh, the southern tier of Columbiana County from Selineville over towards Wellsville and East Liverpool. And the weather service is going to expire one of the tornado warnings. 
looks to me like the weather service is letting these tornado warnings go there's not much in the way of residual circulation with those and again those were down across southeast ohio and pretty far from our television viewing area right now This area that's getting heavy rain right now, though, in eastern Ohio is, is still under a flash flood warning. A lot of these communities had a couple of inches worth of rain uh, last night into this morning. So Toronto, Island Creek, and even down towards East Liverpool. Uh, the Ohio River is running high down here already, and so this is not going to help matters. Uh, we could be looking at our most significant Ohio River flooding situation in at least maybe a couple of years. I'd have to look at the data, but been a little while since we've had any problems along the Ohio River, um, along uh, the Ohio-West Virginia border and the Ohio-Pennsylvania border as well. Showed you, uh, <clears throat> showed you this earlier. This is the uh, this is the gauge at East Liverpool, showing a crest Thursday afternoon at 15.4 feet. That would put it at minor flood stage, but only about a half a foot shy of moderate flood stage there at East Liverpool and, and Wellsville is in a similar situation. Uh, after the crest, a quick retreat of the river is expected as uh, rain will definitely not uh, not be much of a problem later on this week. It'll just be gnarly outside. If you've been watching my forecasts for uh, later this week, yikes. And, you know, it happens around here in April, that is for sure. But we're going to have a couple of pretty gross days. Thursday and Friday with rain showers that'll mix with snowflakes and temperatures mostly in the lower 40s, gusty breezes. Ugh. Uh, the weekend will be kind of a transitional period, kind of kind of cloudy and kind of cool for a lot of Saturday, but then the sky clears. Sunday should be bright and sunny. It'd be nice if we were having the eclipse on Sunday rather than Monday because I'm starting to become a little more pessimistic about Monday's cloud forecast. Um, I talked about that earlier on social media and on 21 News at 6. So, of course, we've still got six days to go until the eclipse and plenty of time to sort uh, that forecast out but today's data was definitely mm, not great uh, we'll see what tomorrow's tomorrow's weather model data will bring the models giveth and taketh away that is for sure not only for eclipse weather but a lot of different types of weather including in some respects today's severe weather threat you know yesterday's modeling was pretty intimidating looking for today today the modeling kind of backed off for our specific area but just to our south it looked still pretty impressive and that's why overall the severe weather risk remains highest to our south this evening. But it's a rainy night now unfolding in a good chunk of our viewing area. Rain's pretty light once you're up into northern Trumbull County, but some decent rain along the PA Ohio line now from Trumbull into Mercer County. Uh, raining, rumbles of thunder, Youngstown area, the whole 224 corridor down towards Salem, Latonia, Washingtonville, Damascus, Columbiana, East Palestine, Unity, uh, New Middletown, Lisbon, West Point, Hanoverton, you know, all these places. Everyone's kind of in the same boat as far as the uh, pretty hefty rainfall rates. I mentioned a few minutes ago, I'm keeping an eye on a potential circulation that, you know, I'm not real concerned about, but I've got to, got to watch down here in Jefferson County. Right here. I've just kind of caught my eye on that near Jefferson, Jefferson Union High School along 152, 213 near Island Creek. Uh, to my eye, this does not uh, pose a big concern right now or a big threat, but I've got to keep watching watching that and making sure it doesn't start doing anything other than being just a little bit visually interesting. It's a little bit of a little bit of a curly signature in the in the radar data, and that's one of those locations that is pretty close to our radar sources. So the radar data, when it comes to uh, wind data, velocity data, is pretty good once you're down into. Jefferson County, Ohio, Hancock County, West Virginia, and close to those radar sites near the Pittsburgh International Airport. I don't see anything else that really catches my eye that is particularly threatening right now. Weather Service in Pittsburgh canceling that last little sliver of a tornado warning that was in effect for areas southeast of Zanesville. And with that, that leaves us with no active warnings. Uh, severe thunderstorm or tornado. A lot of flood warnings. 
but no severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings currently on the board. Just turning into a rainy night. Too much rain though, you know. Uh, we'll take another quick look at some of these rain gauge numbers. Get a fresh look at this data. This is just going back 24 hours. You know, we're coming up on two inches pretty quickly now down towards East Liverpool, uh, about an inch in downtown Youngstown. And actually, let's see if we can get some fresh data into this graphic, because this may not be the freshest. Let's see if these numbers change a little bit after we ingest some fresh data here. Because again, it's raining pretty hard now in a lot of locations. Looks like the numbers are not going to change much right now, but next time this graphic updates, they almost certainly will. All right, so the uh, Weather Service office in Pittsburgh is starting to cancel tornado watch, the tornado watch for some of their counties. Um, that does not include Columbiana, so they left it up for Columbiana here for a little while longer. So they started to trim a little bit out here. And I would expect before the 10 o'clock hour is through, a lot of additional counties to be trimmed out of this, this uh, tornado watch. This is still just keeping my interest a little bit right here. This little weak signature on the velocity data indicating maybe some circulation trying to form. This is down here in Jefferson County, Ohio, um, west of New Cumberland, um, right now west of Route 7. This particular thing that I'm watching is tracking kind of towards East Liverpool like this. And is it worthy of a warning right now? No, I don't think so, but it definitely is going to have to be watched in the next few radar scans. It's just a little bit of a little bit of a signature in the data that is going to have our attention here for for a little while longer. But I did mention a few moments ago, we no longer have any active severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings anywhere in Ohio. A lot of flood warnings. No severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings right now. I'm going to stick with this stream for maybe another five minutes or so just to babysit that potential circulation and make sure it doesn't strengthen or anything. Assuming it doesn't, I'll stop the stream here in about five minutes and uh, start gathering, gathering things and getting ready for our 11 o'clock newscast tonight. Don't forget, you can always stream our newscasts on WFMJ.com, the Storm Tracker 21 app, and the uh, 21 News app as well, in case uh, you're not watching us on a an actual television. And a lot of us, you know, that's the way we consume data these days. It's on our little devices. And uh, if you're a cord cutter and you don't have an antenna and you don't watch local TV at all, but you do want to check out our newscast tonight, I'd invite you to do so on any of our streaming platforms. If you're a Peacock subscriber, um, especially if you pay for that tier that's, I think, $11 a month or something like that, you can watch local news stations on Peacock that way as well. So I'd invite you to do that. I think the free Peacock, or not the free, the like $6 or $5 Peacock, Peacock subscription, I don't think on that tier you can watch local stations live. I think I'm right on that. Overall, the lightning is not quite as intense or as clustered, tightly clustered together with this activity. Heading up uh, into uh, the Route 30 corridor. Just heard a loud rumble of thunder out here in downtown Youngstown. Uh, that startled me a little bit. Overall, the lightning is not as condensed or organized, I would say. Uh, closer to uh, Toronto, East Liverpool, heading over into uh, Beaver County, PA. 
a lot of lightning and thunder out there, but it's just not quite as clustered together as it was. But yeah, this is probably the lightning strike that uh, caused the thunder I just heard. That guy right there. That plus sign. Right there. That's probably the lightning that just produced the big thunder clap that I just heard outside here in uh, downtown Youngstown. Our, uh, our studios, our television studios are on West Boardman Street in the heart of downtown Youngstown, right across from the police station. And, uh, you know, it's always interesting when uh, the thunder rumbles between the taller downtown Youngstown buildings and we're on the top floor here in the weather office here in uh, in our studio building our building and so we're pretty close to the roof here in our in our uh, weather office and so we're pretty close to the action you can hear when it's raining hard when it's uh, thundering loudly we even had a roof leak a couple of times in this uh, office where really heavy rain pooled up on the roof just above our heads and started to drip into the weather office never never really what you want to see all right, the last couple of scans of the radar down in uh, Jefferson County, south of East Liverpool, is no longer that concerning. Don't really see anything tightening up with that potential circulation down there. So with that being said, I think I'm going to stop the live stream here at 9.35. An hour and a half is good enough for one day's work. Um, I will have more posts on social media, of course, before 11 o'clock newscast, keeping you up to date on what's going on. Thanks to everyone who's been watching, whether you watch for a couple of minutes or you've been tuning in for the last hour and a half to my live streaming covers this evening. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks as always. I will see you uh, on 21 News at 11 tonight. And if you're an early morning riser, check out Jody White's, or actually it'll be Jimmy Wendelek's forecast tomorrow morning on a Wednesday morning.